So welcome to my talk, um, full, full of lentils. And thanks to the people at Compose uh, for accepting me. Um, so as I said, uh, <laughs> I've been starting to do photography. Uh, so this is my one of my first self-portraits. Um, my name is Fintan Halpany. You can find me online as Fintan, Finto, or Fintan H. And I work in formation. And that's where I was first introduced to Doll. Um, so Doll is created by Gabriel Gonzalez. <laughs> and the pitch is the non-repetitive alternative YAML. Or you can think of it as JSON with functions, types, and imports. And another important feature is it's non-Turing complete. Um, so it's guaranteed to terminate. Um, so the point of this talk is to kind of show you doll like a real intro um, and then later on show kind of a uh, machine learning use case where originally you'd use JSON and then we'll rethink it in doll uh, to have like more type safety and guarantees like that. So I'm going to run through some built-in types. Um, records in DAL, unions, functions, uh, let statements, and imports. So here we have, um, oh, I guess a prerequisite is you install DAL. Uh, there's like uh, different interpreters in, in different languages. The idea of DAL is like a really simple language that can be created, or like or written interpreters written in uh, different languages. Uh, the main one I use is the Haskell version. So I stock, stack install doll and get the command line tool. So here we're checking the type of an expression, which is true. So doll type true, and it's a bool. Um, we can evaluate um, expressions on booleans. So true and false is false. True and true is true. True or false is true. Uh, false or false is false. We're all familiar with Boolean expressions, I imagine. <laughs> um, next type we're going to go through is natural or natural numbers. So zero or uh, above. Um, so when we check the type of uh, the expression zero, we get natural back. Again, we have. Uh, operators that we can use on naturals. So addition and multiplication. An interesting thing about um, the operators that are chosen in DAL is that they're all associative. And um, I think they generally have a unit type as well. So they're essentially monoids. We have integer types. Um, so you'll notice these because they're prefixed with minus or plus. And we can't do arithmetic on them. Um, so the reason, again, is because DAL is a simple language. And al allowing just arithmetic on the natural numbers uh, rules out a lot of uh, nasty edge cases. So you also like, won't find division in a set of operators. We've got doubles. Again, check the type. And we've got values like pi, infinity, uh, minus infinity. And again, we can't do any arithmetic on them. We can just pass them around as values. We've got text. Um, again, check the type. And we can perform operations like just evaluating a uh, plain text expression, concatenating them, or we also have uh, multi-line um, text representation here on the bottom. We've got lists. So checking the type of this expression, we have list. And then what's in the list are natural numbers. So we get a list of natural. We have interesting operators like concatenating two lists, um, folding over lists. Uh, at this stage, I'll mention how types work in DAL. So for fold, as you can see, the first argument to fold is bool. So we're actually saying 
um, the fold function is operating on a list that's containing bools, then we pass in the value, and then uh, the next parameter is the output type that we expect, then our function that's going into fold, and um, our base element in the fold uh, expression. So essentially we're uh, implementing all here. Uh, and we also got length, and there's probably a myriad of other functions that are either built in or in the doll prelude. We've also got optionals. Um, so recently, it optionally used to be an empty list uh, for none, but uh, there's been a change. Um, so now it's none, but we also have to tell it what optional we're expecting or like what value inside the optional we're expecting. So this is why we have none and with natural. And then under that, we have sum and one. Um, and again, type checks for optional natural. Again, we can fold. So we're saying we're expecting text within the optional and we're expecting text out. Um, and we're just using an identity function. Uh, so we get back ABC, but in the case, if we have uh, none, we'll get, uh oh, our default value. Um, the unit type is represented using the uh, curly braces. So we're checking the type of the expression here. Um, so the unit is uh, curly braces with equals in it. The reason we use curly braces is because records are also represented with curly braces. Uh, so the unit type can be thought of as like an empty record. Um, so when we check the type of records, it's actually of type type. Um, and then we can also uh, check uh, or evaluate an expression that is a record. And this is, again, a type. But um, we're saying it's a, a record of, with age, email, and name. And then we can create values. So here's an example of creating a me. And uh, one thing to note is that the keys uh, came out a bit different than what we expected. And this is due to doll um, sorting keys for binary serialization. Um, so we can check the type of uh, a val like a record value. And then if we try and annotate a record, um, that's missing a uh, key. So in this case, I've omitted the age. Um, Dahl gives you a helpful uh, type error saying um, we were expecting age. Uh, sometimes the, the type errors aren't as nice as that. <laughs> uh, we can also project values out of records. So dot age will give us 26. And then we can project multiple uh, keys out. Um, so age and name, and we get back the original record. We've also got union types. In this case, it's an enumeration of uh, weekdays. And projection is just done by um, uh, keying into one of the options. If you want to collapse uh, union, there is a special key function merge, um, which you pass a record that um, handles each case, and uh, and then you pass in the the value, uh, the union value. So in this case, we've implemented the does Garfield hate Mondays function, um, and passed in Monday, and it's true. Um, we can also use unions as uh, some type. Um, so when we check the type of this some type, we're saying, oh, sorry, when we're checking the type of the projection of is not, it's saying for all naturals, um, I can create a type of uh, this union. We've also got functions. 
we can type check. And we can also uh, evaluate them um, just as bare expressions and then also pass in the value to the lambda and it normalizes. Um, so as another example, this time a bit more complicated because we need to take in the types as we saw earlier. So taking in a type A, uh, type B, and then values of type A and type B and ignoring the second one. So essentially the const function. We've got let expressions. So this is a way of uh, binding um, expressions to names. Um, so in the top example, we have the identity function, hit me, and then we've, we can also import uh, URLs and uh, assign them to names. So in this case, I shortened the URL, but this function exists in the doll prelude enumerate, which enumerates all the natural numbers into a list um, up until um, n minus one. Um, and we can also import locally. Do you have a question? Yeah, it's not invalid URL. Uh, I did it to fit it on the slide. Uh, so you can import things from URLs. So like you can import doll expressions from URLs. So add like for example on the doll GitHub, there's a directory with preludes. So if you go to the raw version of uh, enumerate, copy that URL, and then import it into your doll file, it will grab that expression over the net and then you can use it in your file. No, 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 that was, that was purely me just trying to fit things on the slide. <laughs> Otherwise I would have went off to the right. I'm not. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so let's go through uh, an example of uh, turning JSON into DAL. Um, so today I'm going to use the, an example of a support vector machine and doing some parameter learning, or more specifically, hyper parameter learning. Um, in the repo, that where this talk lives, there is a Python script that uh, will accept some JSON and do some um, machine learning model. It's really simple and just cribbed from scikit-learn. Um, is every is there people in the audience that aren't familiar with hyperparameter learning? Cool. All right. Um, so hyperparameters are the parts of machine learning models that. Um, the model can't infer itself. You have to like have hu um, human input into like choosing these. So a way of choosing these is like iterating over the values, uh, different types of values, and seeing um, how well the model performs, and then you can choose like the best uh, values. Does that make sense? Cool. Um, so uh, SVM is a support vector machine, and basically it tries to draw some lines in between um, your data sets to try and classify them in a certain way. Um, so I'm using the classic iris um, data set in scikit-learn, um, where you try and classify the different types of irises de uh, dependent on their uh, sepal width and length. Um, so in this case, we're looking at the C support vector classification, and it's got some inputs. So the first one I'm going to talk about is the kernel. This is, um, I guess, the algorithm on how it learns. Uh, so there's uh, different kernels that we can use, linear, poly, RBF, et cetera. Um, then there's two parameters we're going to focus on, which is the C parameter. This is like the penalty or like loss term for when a uh, model performs badly. Um, so C, uh, like 
penalizes the algorithm uh, to give it a low score. Um, and this gamma coefficient, which is uh, important for the RBF and poly and sigmoid kernels. And then in this, um, in the script, we just call fit on some data set X, um, which are this, the SIPO or SAPO um, features and Y, which are the labels for the irises. And this performs the training on the data. So in JSON, we might uh, think of this as, or like the initial input as what data set are we gonna learn on? So here we're choosing iris and which kernel are we gonna use, in this case, linear. Um, and what happens if we like change our mind, we have to like change the kernel and now we choose RBF. And I already see a problem in this in that they're represented as strings. So we can write typos um, and say your machine learning um, engineer presses enter and goes off to get his coffee and comes back and realizes Python has crashed because you put in a typo <laughs> um, and wasted like whatever amount of time. Um, so we could also talk about our hyperparameters. So we're gonna train on C and gamma. So these are like the um, parameters that we're gonna control. And we can represent those as two keys in a JSON um, object, so gamma and C. So our first choices are gonna be 0.1 and 0.1. But like I said, we wanna iterate over a bunch of values. So in it, um, we're gonna keep gamma as 0.1, and then we're gonna copy and paste a bunch of objects and change the C values. Um, so uh, as you can imagine, this can be very error prone. But also, we haven't touched our gamma values. We might wanna increase those as well. So we do some more copying and pasting and it doesn't even fit on the screen. I actually went up to 100 on gamma. Um, so as you can imagine, very error prone. So instead, let's talk about uh, implementing this in DAL. Um, so where you see kernel.dal, I mean, uh, there's gonna be a file on your system called kernel.dal and has this expression of the unions or of the union RBF linear and poly. And this represents our kernels. And now we have a closed set rather than some open string that can um, have typos. We can also represent our different data sets. So iris or wine. And then our trainer becomes the import of those two files and uh, record uh, the data uh, with the data set and the kernel. We can represent our hyperparameters again in a file and with the keys gamma and C. And we know they're double now as well, we're getting more type information. So we'll wanna have like a helper to create that initial 0.1 gamma value iterating over uh, the C values. Does that sound familiar to any functional programmers? What function might that be? Yes. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's a map. <laughs> um, so we can map over a series of C values, keeping our gamma value the same, and creating a record. Uh, by passing in a C value. And then we'll end up with a list of records. Um, what about our second example where we were also increasing gamma values? Anybody? Huh? Close, yes, like, <laughs> applicative, <laughs> um, yeah, it's the cross-section. 
So we can use lift A2, um, pass in our gammas and our Cs, and then it's gonna, or not cross section, cross product, <laughs> um, and it's gonna end up with the cross product of um, the two sets of values. And I could actually fit it on the slide in this case. So that's it. I've got some extra links if you're interested in it all um, to learn more about it. Uh, there's projects like Doll Kubernetes, which allows you to um, uh, write your cu Kubernetes uh, configurations in a type safe way. Um, there's stuff like Doll Text, so uh, like writing uh, text handling. Um, at Formation, we've written Doll Bot, which is a functional um, library. So it has stuff like functors, applicatives, monads, all that good stuff. Uh, a colleague of mine, Greg File, has got Data, which is recursion schemes for Doll. <laughs> um, yeah. And I also used other links like Scikit-Learn and uh, a Medium article where I crib the machine learning stuff. And as a final message, if you want to see more blurry pics or the one I just took, you can follow me on Instagram at Pinto Haps. <laughs> Thank you.